Welcome back to some more Android programming fun. <clears throat> so today what we're going to talk about is intents um, and activities. Uh, so we're going to be trying to make uh, apps that have more than one screen. Kind of a quick little uh, <clears throat> summary of where we're at right now. Uh, so we've done uh, a couple apps in the class. We've done the hello button and the tic-tac-toe. Uh, hopefully you've, uh, you've seen those. Uh, the other thing that we've done um, is the expectation is that you finish lab one at this point. Uh, if you watch this video, um, make sure to do the labs. The labs are a really good way to like test your skills um, and see uh, see if you really know what's going on. Uh, the most important part of lab one, um, we did uh, one of the Google tutorials, the form stuff, um, and then we made this uh, linear lights out game, uh, clicking on the buttons to change the values, try to get them all matched. Uh, the reason this is important is because we're going to uh, build off of this app. Um, we're not going to build off of the code, but we're going to build off the ideas. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make one that can have multiple buttons. Um, so instead of just our variable number of buttons, instead of just seven all the time. Um, so it's going to have a menu that lets us select things. Um, this project is going to be called the Linear Lights Out Menu. The idea of this app is that there's going to be a main menu with uh, four buttons on it. Uh, one lets you play the actual game with some number of buttons. The second one lets you change those number of buttons. We've got it set up to where you can have three, five, seven, or nine. You can see that in this demo it's got nine. Uh, there's an about screen uh, which tells you a little bit about linear layout or linear lights out. Um, and then there's also just an exit button. Most apps don't have an exit button, but uh, to be honest, four buttons looks better than uh, than three sometimes on the other on the other layout. And I kind of got the idea for some of this stuff from the um, the book uh, Hello Android, um, and they had four, so so I have four as well. Cool. So this is the app we're gonna make. Uh, the goal of this app um, is that you learn about making an an app with multiple activities, um, so multiple screens um, instead of just a single screen. We're also going to be worrying or learning about passing data between activities uh, using intents. So we'll talk more about that as we go. Uh, we're also going to force you to learn some different XML layouts. Uh, so instead of linear layout, we're going to try at times to, to teach you about frame layout, uh, relative layout. Relative layout's a useful one. You'll definitely get some value out of forcing yourself to learn a little about relative layout. Uh, we're also going to learn um, <clears throat> about a couple more widgets, radio groups and radio buttons. Uh, you should have covered these in the form stuff in lab one, uh, so hopefully this is a review. Um, and then we'll kind of finish the app talking a little bit about um, saving from whenever somebody hits the back button when they come back. Um, so saving like the number of buttons that were used. So those are the goals. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, create a new project. Uh, call it Linear Lights Out Menu. Uh, for the application name, I just did lights, um, then I had a space out. I thought that looked the best. For the uh, the build target, use whatever you like. Um, I just set it on 1.5 because nothing in here is newer than 1.5, so 1.5 would work fine. Uh, for the create activity, this one's a little different. We're going to have a lot of different activities. We're going to have a total of four different activities. Um, you can see there are four screens on that prior slide. Um, and so what Create Activity does is it just makes one of your activities for you. So the activity we're going to make is going to be called the Main Menu. Um, so we're just going to make uh, the Main Menu activity. Um, then we'll make these others as we go. Cool, so I'll go ahead and get uh, myself caught up. So I'm going to say File, New, Android Project, uh, Lights, Out, Menu. Um, and I'm going to call it Video. And my <clears throat> build target, I'm just going to use 1.5. Feel free to use something newer. Uh, I think I'm up to 2.3 when I recorded this. Uh, application name, um, I'm just going to call it Lights Out. Package, uh, I'll just do the reverse DNS of Rolls Holman. Uh, Lights Out uh, menu. And the activity I'll create is the main menu activity. Um, and then my minimum SDK, you've got to have at least SDK version 3, uh, which pretty much everybody should have, right? Uh, cool, so lights out menu, um, 
I guess I could have called it linear lights out menu is what I said in the slides. I'll make a match. Linear lights out menu. Um, cool, so we're ready to go. Uh, one of the things that I like to do at the start, just because I'm really paranoid, um, is I kind of like to run it uh, just to make sure that, that everything's happy. Um, nothing's, nothing's, you know, out of whack. Um, and so it should say, you know, just the hello world message. So nothing too shocking. Cool. So everything's working. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to add some resources. Uh, we're going to add a couple strings that we're going to use throughout the app. Uh, we're going to add a couple uh, colors. I recommend that you go ahead and bring up the slides. Um, so to bring up the slides, let's see, I'm on slide five. Uh, to bring up the slides, you can just go to the website, uh, rollsholman.edu.android, um, and you can just click on the slides for today. Um, it'll just save you some typing in a couple places. In class, I try to avoid the copy-paste, but sometimes it's just handy. Um, so for simple things like strings, um, you should get the, the idea of strings by now, so we'll just copy-paste those. Um, there is one formatted string in here, um, so we're doing a percent %d, um, and then we also added in this $1, which is good for localizations, um, if you have multiple of them. Mainly, we're just getting in the habit of doing that. The things that are on here should be pretty obvious. Um, that front page has four buttons um, and a title. Uh, these are our four buttons in our title. So I'm just going to copy this. Um, I'm going to go into my string resources. And I'm just going to paste. Cool. So now I've got some of those resources. Uh, likewise, I'm also going to want some background colors. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a uh, colors XML. Um, I kind of missed that uh, they used to have like Android XML in here. Um, so you can say, if you want to, you can highlight it and you can say file new, um, or you can use the quick key, which is uh, option command in. I'll go ahead and make a new Android XML file. And it's just going to be called colors.xml. For a values XML file, they just add a couple resources, or they add the, uh, the, the basic start for you. Nothing too surprising. Uh, the color that we're going to add um, to this, um, we're just going to call it background. Very similar to what we've done in the past. And the value, I'll just copy it from the slides. Uh, use whatever color you like. Uh, this one is mostly blue. Cool, so getting our resources together. Uh, so far, so good. Now let's go do the fun one. Um, so we've got our colors and our strings. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up um, our <coughs> main XML. Just to, to force you to learn a couple new things. Um, before we did the centering with a linear layout that was horizontal, and then inside that we did a linear layout which was vertical. Um, it's not much of a change, but we're going to make this outermost one be a frame layout. Um, and then the inner one will again use a, a vertical linear layout, just because it makes the most sense. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to make this. Um, this should be review, um, so if you'd like to, just pause the video, try to make it, um, and then I'll and then I'll do it uh, do it with you if you had trouble. Cool. So I'm going to go in and make it. I've been pretty disappointed with the um, new graphical layout tool. Um, I think the other one worked way better than this one. It tries to drag and drop, um, which fails miserably. Um, I like the idea better, it just doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> I'll try not to complain about it too much. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make a frame layout, um, encompass this. Um, it's just going to be easier to do it in code. So I'm just going to go ahead and come into the code, um, and I'm just going to work in the code for a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a frame layout. Uh, the idea is that frame layout is new to you. Um, frame layout has a lot of the same uh, features. Um, everything's got an a Android width and an Android height. Um, you can see that I closed it and it automatically added this end uh, for me. But I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put it down at the bottom. The first thing should have the uh, XML namespace. I'm going to move that from here uh, up to the top one. 
cool. Um, and then um, with the linear layout, um, I want it tight instead of filling the parent. Um, I want it to wrap the content. For the width, I'm going to leave it as fill parent. I'm just going to let those fill the parent. That'll be fine. Um, and then now that I've done a little bit of the code changes, um, I'm going to go back into the graphical layout editor um, and I'm going to set the properties using it. Um, so I've got my outline and my properties set up here. Um, if you don't have these set up, you can always uh, get them and show view. Um, outline is right here. Uh, for properties, you'll have to uh, you'll have to grab it. Uh, so some things that I'm going to do is I want my text view. Um, I want its gravity to be center, so I want its contents to be centered. So I'm going to go into its gravity and say center. Uh, then the linear layout, I want it to be centered up and down. Um, so for it, I want the linear layout to be centered in its parent, which is the frame layout. So for that, I'm going to use layout gravity. Um, so now those two things are centered, which is great. Um, and the text, um, instead of saying hello, um, I want to select one of those uh, text strings I've brought in. Um, so I'll grab the main title. A lot of little things we're going to fix. Um, I'll go ahead and make uh, the size bigger. Um, I'll go ahead and add a little um, bottom margin just because there's going to be buttons coming and I'm going to give them a little space below. Um, order of operations doesn't matter, just a lot of little things to fix. The frame which fills the parent, I'm going to set its background uh, to that background color. So now I've got a nice pretty blue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some buttons. Um, so the buttons you can drag and drop and just kind of hope they go to the right place. Uh, that was close. Um, so drop that button. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to have four buttons. If they're wanting to go above it, but eh. Then the idea is eventually you should be able to move uh, to move things around. You can see it kind of works. Ah, there I succeeded on that. Uh, for the buttons, what we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select them all here. Uh, we're going to make them fill parent, which will make them go side to side. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some padding on the left and the right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add that padding on the frame layout. So my padding left, I'll just add a big 40 dp padding on the left and the right. Um, so now I've got to set the text on these buttons. Um, I should have some uh, some strings for those. For the play button, I'm going to say uh, play start. Um, eventually we'll use the play format, but for now we'll just use play start. So to say play with seven buttons, just to kind of see how that looks. Uh, the next was the change the number of buttons. So you can play with like three toggle buttons, five toggle buttons, seven toggle buttons, or nine toggle buttons. Uh, next up is uh, the About button. So the About button is actually going to be our first um, first activity that we make. Um, ooh, I guess it says About Linear Lights Out. I was expecting it to only say About, uh, but that's, that looks great. Um, and then last is Exit. Um, and Exit will be fairly simple for us to implement. Cool. And then since we're going to be uh, referencing these in code, uh, we're going to give them IDs. Just to be consistent with what I'm going to do in the uh, the code, um, I've got what their IDs are here. So we're going to have play underscore button, uh, change underscore num buttons. So the change number of buttons button, the about button, and the exit button. Um, and then here are some other information, which I did close enough in my example. So the ID for this one, this is my play button. Uh, change number of buttons button my about button and then my exit button cool um, and then just to kind of uh, make sure that all my buttons are set up 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a listener. Um, I guess you could run it as well, just make sure that the things are running good. Uh, so things are running good. Uh, we're happy. Um, if you want to see what it would look like on a rotate, um, you can do a control F11. Um, you can see that the rotate actually looks fine, um, but just uh, just to get some practice, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you what you do if you want the, the layout to look different um, on a landscape. Uh, we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, let me go ahead and get the slides caught up a little bit here. Um, so here's the code for the, the portrait, um, if you'd like to uh, do that. Um, so we're going to create that, that landscape layout, and we're also going to create some uh, listeners. It doesn't really matter which we do first. Um, I feel like creating a layout, so I'm going to do that first. So the way that Android works with resources um, is <clears throat> you often will have the same file name um, in different folders. So they're, they're different files, uh, but they have the exact same name. They're just in different folders. Um, and you'll see this a lot with things. Um, so for example, I'm using, an, I'm using Android 1.5, uh, but if you were to create a project using one of the newer versions, um, you probably got um, a lot of drawable folders. So this is a good example um, of what I'm talking about. You can see that all the drawable folders have an icon in them. Um, and you can see that in the H, so this is the high density, um, you know, it's a 4K file. Um, in the medium one, it's a 2.5K file. And then in a low, it's a 1.7K file. So what the system does is it's smart, um, is it will decide which resource should I use, um, and it'll go grab that folder. Layouts work the same way. Um, if there um, is a special um, like layout uh, hyphen port, or I think it might, it might be portrait, it'll use that. Um, if there's not a specialized one, it'll default to just layout. The one we need is we're going to create a new folder, and the name is important. Uh, the name is layout, um, and then hyphen land. So layout hyphen land. Um, it will look for this folder uh, when it looks for a landscape layout. To make it, I'm just going to start off by copying uh, main.xml. So I just did a copy um, and then a paste. Um, and what I'd like to do here, um, I'll just skip down and show it in the slides, um, is I'd like to make a table layout uh, with two rows. Um, I'm going to put these top two buttons um, in the first row, um, and then these next two buttons in the second row. Um, and again, this is just kind of something I got from, uh, from a, a pretty good book, the Hello Android book, which I recommend. Um, and I thought it was a neat way to show uh, landscape layout. So let's go ahead and make this happen. Um, so what we're going to need is we're going to need um, in our linear layout, we're going to need a table, um, and then we're going to need a row, um, and it's going to have to contain these things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop um, a table, um, and then a row, um, and, <laughs> and then I'll fix it all in code. Uh, so first I'll go ahead and grab myself a table layout. Uh, I'll just kind of drop it in here, um, and then a row. I'll try to drop it on the table. Yeah, that did not work. Um, and, um, you know, usually I'd use the up arrows to try to move things around, but um, I don't think it's going to work out for me. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, uh, <laughs> whoa, it's getting worse. Um, all right, I'm going to play with it in XML before I make it worse. I somehow moved my exit button all over the place. Control A, Control I. I think I made a bunch of white space. I thoroughly believe that the uh, GUI editor um, will get better. Um, it used to be better, um, so hopefully we'll be able to get back to that point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my table layout, um, and I'm going to have all the buttons be inside my table layout. So I'm just going to grab all my buttons. And then what I want to find next is I want to find that, that table row. All right, here's my table row. 
Um, I don't want two buttons inside it, so I want the play button. Um, and then I don't know how the exit button got up here. Let's move the exit button back down where it belongs. Um, so I want play um, and change number of buttons in there. So there's my first table row. And then I want another table row. And I'm also going to grab this table row ending. Cool. Um, and so there's a few things that I could continue to edit. Um, I happen to know that we won't ever need to reference these rows, so I'm just going to delete the IDs out of them. Um, same with the table. I don't need to reference it, so I'll just delete the IDs out of it. I'll also go ahead and set the table to uh, fill parents on the width, um, as well as the rows width. I'll tell them to fill parent, because everybody's just going to fill parent on the width. Um, and let's go see what we've got in the graphical layout. Cool. So we've got uh, we've got a reasonable looking thing going already. Um, 40 fills a, a bit extreme. The other thing you'll notice is that there's actually a much bigger gap on the left than the right. Um, the reason for that is that the linear layout, or sorry, the table layout, I'm going to expand it out here. The table layout has a property called stretch columns. Um, and we want to set that property. So stretch columns. There's also shrink columns. Both of these are important. So stretch columns we're going to set to star. Um, and you can see that it, uh, it stretched our columns out some. That looks pretty good. So now if you run it, uh, what it should do is it should, uh, oops, I must have closed it, um, is it should look very different in portrait. So my emulator came back. Um, so in portrait, it looks like this. Uh, if we rotate it to landscape, um, you can see it has this very different look. Cool. So now I'll uh, start adding some listeners, which in the slides I had done a little earlier. Um, so ready to add some listeners. Um, so the listeners is uh, still review. So this should be a review of things we've done. I guess the landscape was new, but it's not a hard concept. Um, so we're going to add listeners and capture references where appropriate. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that some of the buttons we're going to want to reference uh, later uh, to change their text. Uh, so the play button, we're going to want to reference it later to change its text. These other three, though, all we really need for them is listeners. Um, so you can choose to um, go ahead and make a... Um, member variable um, of type button uh, for the play button. I'll have to go ahead and do a control shift O. Um, and so the play button we're going to go ahead and capture for later. Um, and so we're going to say it's a button, find view by ID, r.id. Uh, play button. And then uh, we're going to add a listener for the play button. A uh, number of things we could do with the, uh, the on-click listener. I'm going to go ahead and use the approach that we've used a couple times. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, and so we're going to make main menu implement the on-click listener. I'm going to use Eclipse to help me out. Uh, hover over it here. Um, and the bottom fix is to let this implement on-click listener. So you can see it adds that, then it throws a new concern and says you need to add the unimplemented methods um, and it makes the on click for me. Cool. Um, and then down inside on click, um, I'm going to do a switch statement based on uh, the ID. Great. So we're going to be doing some work down there. Let's go ahead and set the rest of our uh, listeners, or our buttons to have listeners. Um, so we could do what we did before, which was capture a reference to it and then set the listener. Um, to make the code a little shorter, not a lot shorter, uh, we can just find it. Um, so we've got to change number of buttons. And so he needs a uh, set on click listener.
and then the other two, what have we got? We've got an about button, then we've got a exit button. Cool. Uh, the first thing I like to do when I'm just kind of getting started um, is I just want to make sure that they actually like all respond um, and their clicks are good. So I just usually put little log messages in here. So for case uh, r dot id dot um, play button, we'll just print out a little log message that says oh, we need a tag. Um, so you can do whatever you like with the tag. Um, I'm just going to make a private static final string. Um, I'm just going to make it the initials of this app. So I'm just going to say LLOM linear lights out menu is what that stands for. Depending on the complexity of the app, you know, you might need a lot of different tags. I'm just going to use one tag that's going to be used throughout the app. So LLOM is my tag. Uh, play. And we'll just go ahead and add space for all of them. So change buttons, and a bounce, and an exit. So this one's going to say change buttons, change number of buttons. About and exit. Uh, do a control shift O to import the log. Um, I did this extremely quickly. Um, if you're trying to type while well, I was typing, my guess is I went too fast. Um, just pause me um, anytime, anytime you'd like. The best way to learn this is to actually do it. Um, you've got the slides. Um, Feel free to be, you know, a little lazy. Feel free to copy paste. So this uh, this should hopefully all uh, all work. Um, and you can see I've got all the information in the slides. Um, I know it seems silly, but if you kind of copy paste and you prove that it works, um, sometimes you can get a lot more out of examples. So let's go ahead and run it. So if I run this guy, uh, the goal is hopefully all of these. Uh, get put into my log cat. So inside my log, I'm going to create a new filter. Oh, I've already got one. Um, LLOM filter. Um, if we look at what this was, it's just a name LLOM and a tag of LLOM. Great. And so now if I click on play, um, it'll say play. If I click on change number of buttons, about or exit. And um, I mean it works in portrait or landscape, right? It doesn't doesn't matter which one you're in. Um, the button is still the same ID. Great. Um, so, so far so good. Uh, next let's start implementing these. Um, the first one to implement and certainly the easiest to implement is the exit button. Most of the times you finish apps um, or you, you close an app by just hitting the home button um, and that, that pops you back to the home screen. Um, but you could also programmatically exit um, and the way you do that is you just say finish. So now if we click on the, uh, the exit button, uh, once it loads up again here, now when we click on the exit button um, it will actually exit uh, the program. Um, it looked like I clicked on it twice there, that was just because I had, a, <laughs> I had another version running. Um, so <clears throat> clicking um, on exit now finishes the app um, and all is, all is right with the world. So that one was pretty straightforward. Um, so we've double checked that things are working. Uh, we've double checked that the, uh, the exit button um, actually exits, which is great. We've got it working in landscape, uh, sorry, portrait and in landscape. Um, so we're doing a lot of good things, um, but this is review. I've also got the uh, code that uh, I used for main.xml uh, when I was setting this up for the landscape, if you ever want to reference it. So now we're going to start in uh, with you know what would be the new stuff. Um, I like reviewing the old stuff, but now it's time to kind of start some new things. We're going to start making new activities. So if you want to make an application that has different screens, 
The way you do that in Android is each of those screens is its own activity. In order to make an activity, um, you've got to do a couple things. Uh, you've got to create a new class. Um, you've got to override the onCreate method, you know, to get something visible. You'll typically want to put something um, in a layout file uh, to present it on the screen. You could do it programmatically, but declarative programming with an XML layout file is really the is really the way to go. Um, add the appropriate resources uh, for your layout file. And then this one gets some people. Um, in order to launch a second activity, you've got to register it in your Android manifest file. Um, so there's this Android manifest file in every project. Um, and inside it, it says what activities you have. And so you're going to have to add something in here um, to make a new activity. Once you've kind of got that stuff set up, the next thing is to do is to uh, present that activity from, uh, from an existing activity. Uh, the mechanism for doing that is you first create an intent. Um, an intent is actually a very powerful tool. Um, you create an intent. An intent. Um, there are two types of intents. Um, some that launch a specific activity, which is what we're going to do here. And then you can also make them to where they launch like a general thing. Like you say, launch an activity that can handle sending an email. Um, and you'll just send that to the system and it'll go find um, an activity for you. The really neat thing about Android is how easy they make it um, for not only you, you to run the system activities, but also you could run some other third-party developer's activity. So if somebody else makes a mailing app, um, you know, you can call their stuff as well. What we're going to do is we're going to call an explicit activity. We're going to call a named, like, call this exact activity, because um, that's really the best way to get started. Um, and then we're going to start that activity uh, using a, a start activity command, um, using that intent. And the thing we're going to do later is we're going to pass data in that intent. So let's go ahead and start making some of these things happen. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to go and create that new class. Um, we're going to create a class called about, so about.java. We're going to go ahead and make it be a subclass of activity. So it's going to be an activity. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and right click on your project, say new class, call it about, um, and make it super class B activity. Cool. Uh, whenever you do that, uh, you can see that it goes ahead and adds the extend activity uh, and the import for you. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, override the onCreate method. A couple ways to do that. You could say override unimplemented methods um, and you could uh, find onCreate. Another way you could do it, uh, which is what I do more likely, uh, is I just copy it from somebody else's on create, um, but you know, whatever approach works. Um, so we're going to call our super, um, so call our whatever activity wants to do it on create, um, and then we'll set the content view. We're going to set the car, the content view um, to an r dot layout dot um, about. Um, about does not exist yet. I mean, the only one that exists is main, right? Um, so we're going to have to create that one. Um, so um, I'll go ahead and save it. Um, it's yelling at me that it doesn't exist. Uh, let's go remedy that. So uh, click on the layout folder um, and then click on file new. Um, Whenever I make a new layout XML, I do kind of like to use the, the Android XML as opposed to just creating a file, um, just because it does add a couple useful things. So it's going to be called about.xml um, of type layout. Um, ooh, this is neat. I hadn't noticed this before. You can change the root element. Ooh, that's fancy. I like that. Um, the root element that we're going to use in this one is actually, we're going to use a scroll view. Oh, that's neat. I hadn't seen that before. Cool. Um, so you can click on finished. Um, and so you can see that uh, the little helper went ahead and made a scroll view for us. It added the XML namespace um, and the fill parent, fill parent um, on the layout width and height. 
nothing truly sacred about a scroll view. Um, to be honest, we don't need it for this example. Uh, the only thing we're going to put in here is we're going to put some text in here. Um, and the example in the book used a scroll view, so I thought, what the heck, we'll use a scroll view as well. Um, our text is going to be much shorter than that, uh, but if you have a lot of text, a scroll view might be handy. Great, so let's go ahead and get the sides cut up here. So this uh, r.layout.about. One thing we're going to need is we're going to need a string resource uh, for this new uh, XML file. So let's go ahead and add to our string resources. Um, so we've got a little string resource here that gives a little short description um, of the game. So into my strings, um, I'm going to go ahead and add this resource. Um, you can put it on multiple lines, and that would be fine. Um, but you can also just leave it as one long line. To be honest, I just leave them as one long line, because there's no harm in it. So clicking a button toggles the state of that button and any neighbors. The goal is to make all the buttons match, short and sweet. Save that. Now let's go back to our about.xml. Um, so you should be able to drag over a text view, uh, plop it down inside the scroll view, which is great, um, and set the text on it um, to be that new string we just added. So we're going to set it to um, about description. Um, and then you can make the font. I mean, you can make the font whatever you like. Um, I'll make it a little bigger just for fun. Uh, the next thing we're going to do with this is we're going to, um, well, let's add a little padding around our scroll view. Um, so let's add a little padding, let's say 15. Um, you can add it on all of them if you like, but really um, what's going to eventually look the best is if we just add it um, on the, the bottom left and right. Um, I know it looks kind of silly now, uh, but, but bear with me. What we're going to do with this activity is it's going to have a theme. Um, you can see some of the different themes uh, by uh, clicking on theme and then you can like look to see what some of these themes look like. Um, these themes just kind of show you like an example of what this would look like. Um, but to be honest, they look different in the emulator um, than um, here. Um, but it'll just kind of give you a visual idea of what it's what it might look like. Themes are also different by device. Um, so the uh, graphical layout with the theme uh, won't necessarily uh, be honest. <laughs> um, so we're going to be using a theme.dialog. This just makes it kind of have that look where you actually set the theme is um, whenever we add it to the manifest, that's where you say the theme. But cool, so we've got our scroll view, which we didn't really need, but I guess it's good practice. Um, and then our text view to go inside of it. Um, choose to make the text, you know, as big or as small as you like. We'll bump it up to 18 SP. All right, that's too big, 16 SP. Cool. All right, so um, looking back at our, our to-do list. So what are we on? We're on slide 16. Um, so the next thing we needed to do is we need to register the activity in the manifest. So let's go look into that. Open up your Android manifest. Uh, let's take a look at what's already there. So what's already there um, is we've got um, you know our manifest node. Um, inside that we've got our application. Um, inside the application um, we've got, um, well, I mean, our, our icon and app name. Then we've got our activities. So the only activity we've got is that main menu activity. Um, it's got a name as well. Um, it's just got the app's name. And then one thing that it's got is it's got this intent filter. Um, what this particular intent filter does is this makes this activity the entry point for the application. Only one of your apps should have this uh, this intent filter um, because this will be what launches when your activity or when your app starts. So what we're going to do, um, while being lazy, I'm going to copy this one. 
Um, I'm going to temporarily take the intent filter out. Um, and I'm going to change the name of this activity. It's just going to be called about. Um, and the string that I'm going to use, I believe I've got a string called um, about as well. Let me make sure that that's the right name. Um, about, yep. Great. Um, so this is what, um, <clears throat> this is the bare minimum that you need to add a name and a label. In this case, we're also going to add one other thing. Uh, we're going to add that theme. Um, so the theme will give it a very different look and feel. Uh, I'll go ahead and try to type it here. Um, and then um, if I fail, uh, the slides will help back me up. Um, so the theme that we're going to set, we're going to use an Android defined theme. Um, so we're going to say Android uh, colon style. Um, I think it's slash theme dot. Um, and then there are a lot of themes that we looked at just a second ago. Dialogue is the one I think I want. Um, so this is the name, the label that will be in the title bar, um, and the theme. Uh, let's go see if I actually typed all that in correctly. Um, so here's the XML. Um, register with a theme. Uh, Android colon style slash theme dialogue. Cool, looks good. So this is what we're ultimately going to end up with. But just to test it, let's do this. Um, if you were to run it right now, um, what it would load up is it would load up the main menu activity, um, which you were expecting. But if we were to take this intent filter and cut it out of here and paste it into this one, and now if we were to run it, um, we would see a very different look because it would launch that about box. So this is what that about box is going to look like. Um, you can see that that theme makes it look way better. Um, so just if you don't believe me, let's take the theme off real quick. So I'm going to do a control X and I'm going to run it now. Um, and so without the theme, um, it's going to look pretty darn lame. Yeah, there it is without the theme. Uh, that stinks. Um, and then there it is um, with the theme, or there it will be here in a second. Cool, so it kind of makes the background transparent, puts this nice looking border around it. Um, you can see why I didn't leave a top margin because it already left plenty of margin. Um, and I think this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and put our intent filter back where it belongs, uh, which is with the main menu. Um, and let's go ahead and do the, uh, the last step of launching a new activity. Um, and that was um, to, to make an intent um, and then to start that activity. And so that we're going to do from code. So whenever somebody clicks on the About uh, button, what we'd like to do is we would like to start this activity. So where's the About button? It's right here. So we're going to make an intent, a new uh, intent. Uh, an explicit intent, and then we're going to start uh, activity uh, with the intent. And this is just kind of how it works. So we're going to make an intent. Um, I'll call it about intent. So it's a new intent. Um, there are a couple things that you can do with intents. Um, the most common style um, is to pass in the uh, context. Um, so the context that we're going to pass in, activities or subclasses of context, so we're just going to pass in this. Um, and then the class that we're going to pass in, so I'm going to pass in this, is the class of that new um, activity we want to launch. So we're going to pass in the about class. And then to start it, we just say start activity. Um, we need to pass in an intent, so we pass in the about intent. Great. Um, so now when we click on uh, the about button, it should launch that new activity. This would be exciting. Um, so cross your fingers, click on about, presto. Um, our first new activity. 
It's not a very exciting activity. Um, you can see that the uh, the code for it was ridiculous, which is kind of the league minimum for a code you could write for an activity. Um, but it is an independent activity. Um, it, it lives on its own. Um, it uses this concept of a theme, um, and I think it's pretty neat. Uh, so what we're going to do to try to make these videos um, a little bit more manageable um, is we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this video. Uh, and we're going to kind of stop with, uh, with each uh, activity that we make. So we're going to stop after the About box, um, and then we'll do the Settings, um, and we'll stop the video there. Um, and then we'll do the Play one, which is kind of the biggest. So yay, our first new activity. Uh, go ahead and come back next time, uh, and we'll start up with the next activity, uh, which will be the Change Number of Buttons. Great. Hope to see you soon.